Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric with One Number, and in today's Tableau tutorial, I wanna cover 10 formatting tricks that I use in Tableau to help me do things uh, more easily, more efficiently, uh, make things more beautiful, whatever it may be. I'm trying not to reuse content I've done in other videos previously, so some of these may be a little bit more obscure, and if I think of anything related that I didn't cover here, I will drop a link to that video in the description. So uh, in no real, strategic order. Uh, here is my list of some of the different uh, formatting tips that I'll be covering. I'm not going to read these right now, but if you want to pause this, you see one you like, you want to jump to it. I have chaptered the video, so you should be able to uh, jump to whatever it is that you're looking for. Okay. So one of the first tricks that I like to tell people that it's not like it's complex, but you just might not realize it, is that you can format a measure color. And so what I mean by that is let's say that every time I use sales, I don't want it to be the default Tableau blue. I have my own custom gradient that I want. So what I can do is I can go to the sales measure, hit the drop down, default properties, color, and I can set the default color to some other scheme. So let's just say purple, okay? So now, any time that I use sales going forward on color, it's gonna default to that purple color scheme. Um, it won't change it if you already used it somewhere else. That may be a blessing or a curse. Maybe that's nice, you don't want it editing things, or maybe that's annoying, you wish it would just change everywhere. So if there were some places I'd use sales already, um, I would have to take sales off and put it on again, but then when I put it on again, the new default would be this purple scheme. Okay, so hopefully that saves you um, some time if you're kind of reusing the same measures over and over again and you just want the color scheme to stay with the measure. Setting the number format for multiple fields at once. So you may know that you can set the default number format for a measure in the data pane. Um, so you hit the drop down, go to default properties and number format. What you might not know is that you can do this for multiple fields at once. So like sales and profit, for instance, I can control select both of those, uh, right click, default properties, number format, and then I'll just do custom currency, no decimal places. And then now the nice part about this is uh, both of those fields number formats changed. So. For two measures, it's not that big of a deal, but at scale, like 5, 10, 20 measures, this can be a really nice way of saving yourself some time. Okay, so duplicate sheets to retain formatting. I've just built a really simple um, looking summary tile here. This just got sales as a title and then the sales figure. But there are some customizations I had to do to make this worksheet. I changed the background, I added borders, I changed the text size. So let's say I wanted the exact same structure of summary tile, but I want it to be the profit field, okay? So the simplest way to get there without having to redo a bunch of work is just to right click, duplicate my sheet. Let me just call this something I'll know it by. And then what I'm gonna do, and this is important, is I'm going to directly drop profit over sum of sales. In that way, it retains the formatting, the size, the boldness, whatever. If I remove sales and then add profit to text, it clears that formatting. So really important, not only are you duplicating a sheet, but make sure that when you are replacing elements, you drop them one for one over the old pills. And in this case, there is a little bit of manual work that I need to do, but not bad. Okay, idea number four, copy and paste formatting. So in this case, uh, Oh no, I didn't change the formatting here yet. So let me change the formatting for this line graph. I'm just gonna do a couple simple things, like maybe I'll just set the grid lines to be none so there aren't those lines in the background. And I'm just gonna pick a just off white uh, background color for my sheet. So we wanna do that for some reason. So now if I don't wanna have, if I wanna have that same formatting in other sheets, but I don't wanna have to go through all the same clicks, what I can do is right click on the worksheet tab copy formatting, go to another worksheet, right click on that tab, paste formatting. Um, so when you've done a lot of formatting changes, this is nice and helps you retain consistency. Uh, this is limited to just things that you changed in that formatting window. So if I changed you know, the line color in the Mars card, that wouldn't change uh, with copying and pasting formatting. 
All right, so setting a default sort order for dimensions. I think this is something I didn't realize Tableau could do for a while. And then once I did, I was like, oh my gosh, what have I done with my life? Um, so in this case, these are regions of the United States and they're just sorting in alphabetical order, but they're not sorting in geographic order. So if I ever wanted to pair this with a map, I would really want West to be on the left side and East to be on the right side. So what I can do is I can go to my region field in my data pane hit the drop down, default properties, sort. And I'm gonna do a manual sort. So I'll hit the drop down, manual, bring west to the top and east to the bottom. And now I don't have to worry about it. Anytime that I use my region field going forward, it's kind of a silly example, but it will go in that order that I've just made it go. So uh, cool, hopefully that saves you a little time. Uh, dashboard wide formatting. I screw this up and forget about it all the time. So for instance, if I want my titles to have a specific text color or a specific background color or a certain text size, you can handle a lot of that all at once by hitting the dashboard drop down on your toolbar and doing your formatting from here. So for example, let's say that the, the uh, worksheet titles, mm, let's say I want to add, you know, a dark gray background and I want the text to be slightly smaller and bold, right? I can basically edit them both at once through the dashboard formatting instead of the individual formatting. Uh, you have to be careful about this if you ever overwrite it. Like if I do my own individual thing here where I'm like, yeah, let's make this thing red and huge or something. Like once you've edited one of them individually, it kind of unlocks it from what everything else is doing. So notice that, um, well, actually, I don't know. It actually is keeping up in some ways, which is cool. So I guess some of the elements will keep up, but sometimes if you go edit individually, it um, unties it from the overall formatting. So just be careful with that. Try and do this up front and early if you can think to. Okay. Um, so if you ever wanna use dimensional colors in the background of a highlight table, uh, so let's say I want each region to have a unique color. So I put region on color here, and then I end up with something like this, right? I don't know if you ever had something like this happen, but basically Tableau doesn't really play super nicely when it comes to a dimension on color instead of a measure on color in a highlight table. So my trick here is to turn it into a bar chart. Uh, you may have seen this in other videos I've done. I'm going to create a calculated field. It'll just be the name one. The formula will just be the minimum of the number one. I'm going to change my mark type to bar. And I'm just going to put one on size. So now just with a little tinkering, maybe get the size slider up. If I need to, I could always add a border. Now I have a nice looking highlight table-esque visual um, with a dimension color in the background instead of a measure color. Okay, selecting and formatting layout containers. So a kind of a trend I've seen recently in Tableau is that people will have sort of a gray backdrop and canvas and then like white worksheets or objects sitting on top of it. So if you're ever curious how people do that or if you're ever like, is my object in a layout container? How would I know? How would I select that? So check this out. So if you click on any object, so I've just clicked in the background of this uh, bubble chart. If you double click on that handle at the top of the object, it will grab the layout container if it's in a layout container. So you can see this dark blue border now that these two sheets are inside of. If I do this again, this I believe, I'll do it again just cause, but I believe this is the overall container that everything in my dashboard is inside. So what I can do now is I can go to the layout tab in my marks card and then set the background color. You know, if I want like a light gray, for instance, I can do something like that. And then actually, if I want the whole worksheets to be white, I need to uh, select them individually, you know, do something like this. I don't know. I'm not really sure how people have done this stuff lately. I'll just do a little tinkering and formatting here and then leave it be, you know, something like that. So then you've got the gray background. I got my dark title. I got my white sheets. And it just kind of gives each element a little bit of its own uh, own background color. So hopefully that little tip for selecting and formatting layout containers helps. I have done a video on this, full disclosure, 
Uh, one of my favorite things to do with something like a line graph is to drop the labels on the end of the lines and match the label to the mark color. So if I put region on label here, that's great. I can see that green is east and blue is west, but south and central are a little bit trickier because they're so close together. So what I'm gonna do is in the label tab in my marks card, select that, go to font, and then here's our money maker right here, match mark color. And then now I can pretty much just do away with my color legend and just allow the label to do that work for me. And if you wanna make this story even more cohesive for your user, you could even say label the line ends so that both ends are labeled in case they're starting at the beginning, working to the end or vice versa. Okay, uh, my last thoughts are around just taking full advantage of the color tab in the marks card. So a, uh, a tree map like this can be kind of imposing. Like if this goes on a dashboard and is taking up a quarter of the dashboard, this is a lot of color in your user's face at once. So you got a handful of things that you can do if you don't want a visual like this to be taking so much attention. Uh, so like one of thought would be just turning the opacity down and then maybe adding some borders to just distinguish where those gaps are. So this makes it so it's like not that intense blue that's all up in our face. Sometimes another thing that I will do is just, you know, leave the opacity, but choose like a white or just an off-white color. So that way, all the same information is here. You know, the size is showing me who our top customers are, but it's not, you know, taking my user's attention in the same way that it would if it was a vibrant color. So you could consider um, using a combination of colors, opacity, and borders uh, to be able to help you out and, you know, not draw your user's attention too much uh, when that's not necessary. So those are 10 of my top Tableau formatting tricks. I hope that helped. If you have something that you love that has saved you a bunch of time, please do comment. Um, I want us all to be able to help each other. So uh, thanks for checking this video out and we look forward to catching you on another one here soon.